what happens if you've got a house from the past, but you want to turn it into a house of the future? So I'm here with Dan Taylor today in this lovely old Victorian house that uh, I believe you've done a little bit of work on. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is part of the uh, BRE, which is the Buildings Research Establishment, and this is one of about 70 buildings on the site that's really looking at how we can improve energy and energy usage through, through our buildings. And, and this particular project uh, that we've worked on is a demonstration really to bring to life all of the things that you can do in an ordinary home to, to really make it more energy efficient. So uh, we have talked about smart meters before, Dan, but, but I don't know that, that this is the first time I've seen one of these boxes in the raw. Yeah, so I mean, it's what you've got here is a, a gas smart meter and a, an electric one. They connect directly to, to this little thing, which is right. an in-home display. This is really the, the foundation, if you like, for us, the smart home, because it's got an accurate base of all of the consumption that you're using, and it begins to show you how much you're using and give you tips about how you can bring it down. And then there's another box. So that's behind you is a fuse box. I recognise that. I've got one of them. Yes, that's a fuse <laughs> that's box again that would, box. would traditionally be in your cupboard. But, but this one is a bit different. That, that again is, would sit by your, your fuse box. So again, um, hidden away out, out of sight normally. Uh, here it's not. This is actually a, a voltage optimizer. Basically, if you've got one of those boxes, it can save you some money. So typically, you know, your, your appliances in the house will operate between 220 and 240 volts. Now, the most efficient way is for them to operate at around 2, 220, and that will save you money. If it starts going up towards 240, actually, that's where it costs, costs you more, because you're pulling a little bit more power through, and it's not so efficient. So is what this little box does is it actually tries to manage that down to a, to a fairly consistent level, because part of it is the variability as well, but it just brings it down to consistent 220, and that can save you, as I say, up to 10% off your electricity bills. So that, I'm assuming this is an exquisite uh, illustration of the levels of insulation in the, in the building. Yeah, I mean, this is um, obviously just, just a bit of a diagram to, to show some of the things you can actually do to bring down that, that consumption. The first one, and perhaps the, the most obvious one for, for everyday people, is just simply around insulation. So lots of people have, you know, um, loft insulation, and that, you know, can save you up to around £150 a year for, for an average home. And if you add, actually, cavity wall insulation, something like this, so traditionally most, most walls in most modern homes since about 1920s are built with external brick wall and then, then internal wall as well, and all we do is we put a layer of insulation like this in between those two walls to fill up that cavity and that can save you another hundred pounds a year uh, aligned to that obviously you want double glazing the windows here we've got here are actually triple glazed right. um, which have really helped get, get this house from an F rating as it was up to a B rating oh, wow. um, so that's when you because I've only re recently become very aware of that so when you've got you're, if you're selling your house, there's a... There's a yeah, that's right. Or if you're renting it out, if you're a landlord renting it out, you know, you have to have one of these energy performance certificates and everything that you can do to, to improve that is obviously going to help you um, sell the house. So, Dan, everything, I recognise everything in this room. I'm yeah, very familiar good. with all of it, including the lovely soap, but that... There's a new gizmo on the wall, I don't know what that is. Um, this is actually an alternative heating system that actually produces heat from fresh air, so the air outside. Um, and I suppose in a way it works a, a little bit like a fridge in terms of fridge, you know, you've got a sealed container that it, it just um, takes air from the outside and cools that down. And that's exactly what this does, is it, keeps, it takes the heat from outside effectively and brings that into this room and just keeps, keeps warming it up. It's very slow, gentle heat, so you need a well-insulated home and it just runs and runs and runs and keeps at a very average temperature. But, you know, the amazing things about this is that it actually works in sub-zero temperatures. It can still extract heat from the air. If you take an average home, you've got about a, th a third of your bill today is electric and two-thirds would, would be gas. And this is obviously taking the vast majority of that gas heat, heat away because it's, it's running that. So this can make a massive impact into your bill. Um, and then I think the other thing that's, that's in here that's really important and people often don't think about is just the taps and, and water. You know, people always advise Certainly back, back in my day around, you know, take a shower over a bath. At your power showers, they can put out about 15 litres of water a minute and, you know, a few minutes and you, you've already over, overrun a bath. And the amount of heat that, that goes into heating that water is, is phenomenal. So actually, if you can find either um, aerated or, or better filtered taps or, or power shower, they still, you know, pretty good pressure still comes out so it doesn't impact the pressure. 
but it's what it does do is um, reduce the amount of water that you're, you're actually using and hence the amount of water you've got to heat and again can really bring down your, your bills for heating as, as well as obviously water if you're on a water meter. It's, it's really common these days to actually go around, you know, you often see uh, solar panels up on people's roofs um, and it's actually one of the most cost effective ways of generating your, your own electricity. Really simple and it's, it's beginning to take off at such volume now that actually it's, it's getting much cheaper in terms of buying the panels in the first place. So um, pretty simple in terms of you just need to get some solar panels this is quite a small system we've got up here just six panels um, that can go right up to pretty much as, as big as you want um, but you know this system here is about 1.4 kilowatt hours which for those who who uh, worry about these things actually you know that can probably do you about 10 maybe 15 kilowatt hours a day of, of usage which in financial terms would stack up over a year it to be around you know 400 pounds something like that of direct savings off your electricity right. bill. And then in addition to that, the, the government are trying to incentivize this because it's a really good thing to be doing, obviously, for the environment. So they, they actually give additional money on top of that for every unit of electricity that you generate. Because I think that's the thing that a lot of people don't understand is that you generate that electricity and just say you use all of it in your tumble yep. dry washing machine and your ironing and you've got the kettle on. You still get uh, you still get paid for that electricity, even though you're using it. I, mean, I think that's the thing that. Continues. Yeah, you do, and it, it, so it doesn't matter whether you, it, as you say, whether you export it or whether you use it yourself. You yeah. still get paid for every single unit you, you generate. Yeah. You know, there's also a few myths as, about solar panels. You know, people worry about does it still work on cloudy days or when it's raining, all that sort of stuff, which absolutely it does. I mean, there are a few um, parameters. You do need to have a, a, at least approximately south-facing roof. Um, it doesn't want to be in the shade, so behind a tree or whatever. But other than that, it, it works. Pretty much, you know, come rain, come shine. Yeah. I know what this is. I'm going to say what this is. This is a dedicated 16 amp charger for a, a, an, ele an electric vehicle. Yeah. So um, you know, you know all about obviously the, the joys of uh, electric motoring. And it's certainly one of the things that people have asked me is: is it safe? You know, thinking of electricity outside rain. You know, it doesn't have to be in a garage. But this is. Yeah, absolutely. So this is you know by, by definition fully fully weatherproof. And likewise, you know, the designated circuits that we'll do are going to be proper weatherproof circuits as you'd expect outside. Which you know sometimes you won't. All always get if you're using a, a, an old one that's uh, just stuck on the wall from, from previous years. So Dan, I'm quite intrigued now to see what other gizmos you've got. That, I recognise, is a plug thing. Yes, yeah. Well, I suppose, I mean, you know, we've talked about the smart meter, we've talked a lot about all sorts of different infrastructure things like insulation and the heat pump and solar panels and so on. This last thing I wanted to just talk about was actually how we can begin to help you as, a, as an ordinary person manage your usage of, of energy within the home. So um, as you've pointed out, this wonderful thing here is, is called a smart plug. And as what this does, as you can see, this would just plug into an ordinary three pin socket and then you would plug in whatever you've got, you've got connected. And as what that enables you to do is two things. One, it gives you specific information about what that appliance is using. And so you can actually see, for example, how much does your washing machine or whatever it is cost you. Um, the other great thing about it is you can actually remotely turn it on and off. So if I just give you this example here, um, we've connected this one up to the kettle just to demonstrate and hopefully in a minute we'll start to hear a, uh, a kettle come on. And is what that does is it means that if I've gone out and I've left the iron on or, you know, my wife's left her hair straighteners on, whatever it may be, suddenly rather than having to rush back to the house and think, have I left them on? Is the house going to burn down? Am I going to have wasted a load of energy? Actually, suddenly I can just do that remotely. Flick of a switch, I can do that. I can text it from my phone. I can use my iPhone. So you don't iPad, have to be in. You don't have to be in the house to do that. To no, do that. you can do it at, um, outside of the house. You can do it remotely, or you can do it like like we are here, just sat on the sofa. And that will really bring that to, to life. And then is what you can do beyond that is actually that works through this little hub here, which just plugs into your broadband. So the way it does it is this little box connects to your ordinary broadband router, and that creates an in-home network effectively that connects to all of these different devices, and that can, you can connect it to, to pretty much anything. Um, and actually, that means you can, you can do pretty much anything with it that begins to go beyond just, just energy, but ties in. So, so this little thing is, is an ordinary key fob that I'd stick on my key, but actually it enables me to tell the system when I'm in or out the house. And that becomes really important, both for energy consumption and for other things. So, you know, we've actually recently launched a, secu a home security system, which again, rather than having the old keypad, I can now just turn it on and off. Again, I can text the system when, you know, if I've gone out and forgotten to turn it on, I can text to turn it on. You know, you can't do it yet, but we're working on how I can set this so that when I walk out the house, actually all the lights and everything goes off. And when I walk back in, everything can come back on. And that really leads on to the, the next thing I want to show you, which is a great way of, of saving energy, which is remote heating controls, which Elvin's going to talk to you about in just a second. 
So, Owen, I'm assuming what you're going to show me now is some other really cool gizmo. I mean, that looks cool. A way of controlling your house from remotely. Exactly that, yeah. It's, um, it's remote heating control. Um, it allows people to actually control their heating while they're not in the property. You've got the mobile apps that allow you to take that away and, you know, change your settings as and when. Um, also, there's a comfort aspect as well, I guess. If you um, want to come home early, for example, you don't want to come home to a cold house, you can obviously turn that up. Uh, and if you've got no kind of smart apps or anything like that, you can always text it. So, All right, so yeah. you, it, it's as simple, you could yeah. just use a, yeah, a, an old-fashioned phone that does text Yeah, it. exactly that, yeah. <laughs> so Owen, do you need then a, like a special new boiler or anything really expensive to be installed to have to use this? Um, you can have it installed with a new boiler. Um, you can also retrofit it as well to an existing system. They just need to have standard controls um, standard wet central heating system that will work with. And then do you, do you need you need broadband as well though to, to That's correct, so yes, and that's right. that's how the hub communicates with the devices that are in the house. Right. Fantastic. Um, some of the other things you can do with it are to turn it to on and manually address the oh, actual temperature itself. So cool. if it's not hot enough in here for you, we can, yeah, crank that's, it up. Because that, all I would ever do, I'd, I'd be walking around the house doing this. I'll show you. <laughs> Put a coat on. <laughs> but that is fantastic. That is so good. So that will that will effectively that adjusts the thermostat. So you don't need to open the cupboard and turn the little knob. Yeah, exactly it that. Yeah, yeah. So one of the things I've learned uh, seeing what was in this house today is that there's loads of different options that are available to us to change the way that we use energy in the home. I mean, obviously there's solar panels. It makes a lot of sense if you've got a south-facing roof and you can afford to install them. They really are a very sensible thing to do. But there's loads of other options, loads of other ways you can save energy. And more importantly, lots of ways you can stop wasting energy, because let's be honest, we all waste quite a bit at the moment. So the, the, all the things about the timers and the remote controls that you've got there, the air source heat pump, fantastic thing. I mean, really amazing stuff. And my favorite, really, is that you could go to the other side of the world and switch on your own kettle. Brilliant. Let's go. Let's go.